Hey, Rick. Hey, Megan. I'm coming to you today from outer space. Nice. My windows are too bright behind me, so I thought, well, let me just blur it and um, take it for there. So today creative. we're going to talk about um, some, we're going to get into the weeds a little bit. It might be a little mm. bit boring. It might be exciting, but we're definitely dancing on thin ice. So let's get into it and get people educated, especially if they're a realtor, this might be very helpful to you. So we usually base our, our talks on things that have happened. And um, what happened recently was that we submitted an offer and the offer was a fantastic offer. And the agent was starting to get a little bit snippy about our pre-approval and we were like, dude, like we're good to go. Like what, I don't know what this guy was looking for, but mm -hmm. eh, I wasn't feeling too copacetic about it. Mm -hmm. And uh, he kind of thought he was a know-it-all. And he said to me, um, I'd like to see your DU approval. So I'm going to explain to people what it is, or maybe you should explain to people what a DU approval is. Yeah, thanks. No, I'm happy to do that. It's a good topic because there's a lot of things that go on behind the scenes with offers that consumers don't see. Mm -hmm. That's that's what we do. We do it all the time. And it's part of the negotiation process. So on every lender, the underwriting platform is a standard underwriting platform approved. It's essentially a Fannie Mae's platform. And it's an automated system where the lender inputs the data, the buyer's income, so on and so forth, employment feeds it to the system and artificial intelligence essentially underwrites that file and it creates what's called du findings mm -hmm. du means desktop underwriter mm -hmm. okay, du that's, that's that's what that is so here's what happens though the underwriter who actually physically reviews that file uses those du findings mm -hmm. as kind of a the framework or the blueprint if you will to validate the information on those findings mm -hmm. And so as they underwrite that file, if I say the income is X, they want to see the documents in the file to verify that that is actually X. If mm -hmm. I say that if the income or if I say that money verified is Y, they want to verify the bank statements to verify that's the money where it came from. So they're validating those BU findings. Mm -hmm. That's how underwriters underwrite a file. But what happens is we know all too well is that these, a lot of agents will ask for, I want to see the DU findings. Well, come on. Here's the reality. You and I both know this. Probably 99% of the real estate agents who are out there don't know how to read it. Mm -hmm. it's several pages, it's technical data, it's information that's, that's mortgage lingo on underwriting, and it's not really relevant. And so when an when a agent says to me, I want to see the DU findings, what they're really saying is, I think I'm a, I think I'm a big dog in my own mind, and I want to see something that I don't understand because I want to act like I understand it. Yeah. Uh, you know what I'm saying? And so take that with a grain of salt every time. <laughs> it bothers me, as you can tell. So, but here's what's important to know. And here's why it's not relevant. As a lender, I could put that the buyer makes $12,000 a month on the application, but even that buyer might make $10,000 a month. Well, the DU doesn't know that because it's based on what I input. So I can produce for you a Beautifully done, DU findings, super qualified buyer, and it's completely worthless because mm -hmm. it is not validated. Mm -hmm. It's not. And so, so when a, someone asks for a copy of the DU findings, that's really an incomplete request. Right. Okay? So what you and I do a lot of, we do this a fair amount of time, is we do uh, like a cross call. And so when we do this, what do I always ask for? Mm -hmm. show, me the, show me the bank statements. Show me the, show me the W-2. Show me the pay stubs. Because that's where the file is going to make sense. I can read the DU findings, but I want to see the documents that back up those findings. Right. Yeah, I like it. That's essentially it. A lot of times, you know, the uh, loan officers are entering the information into the desktop underwriter system. And like mm -hmm. you said, they're entering the uh, the income. But like, you know, there's all kinds of rules about income. You just can't use just any old income. It's like, is mm -hmm. it commission income? Is it regular income how long have you had this income how long have you been at this mm -hmm. job 
Uh -huh. To uh -huh. even be able to qualify if it's going to count. So a Correct. DU approval means nada, nothing. And exactly. it's only as good as whomever input it. And if they knew what in the hell they were doing, and chances are they don't. So, um, yeah. And then I also, I think it's kind of creepy when somebody uh -huh. sends over uh, somebody's full DU approval because... It's like almost like when they send me over their full bank statement. I don't want to see mm -hmm. their full bank statement. Like, I don't want to see where they spend their money or how many times mm -hmm. a day they go to Starbucks or, mm -hmm. you know, like that's nobody's business. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, there's all kinds of like consumer, you know, sort of protection in there that you have to be careful mm -hmm. to not overshare your client's information. Like, it's just, it's a little bit weird. Yeah, it's, it, it, it's you know. I get the logic behind it. Logic makes sense, but if they, but the key, the the key piece that they always miss is the validation of that information. Yeah, and it takes someone like me to be able to see those documents to be able to validate it. And yeah. you and I have both been through different scenarios where, you know, they get the slender calls and stuff, and go, hey, they're they're good to go. Don't worry about it. My view's good. We're solid. Let's go. Oh yeah. And you go, okay. Well, let me see it. And I look at it and I go, man, eh, not so fast, your pal. You can't yeah. use this income. Right. And then it gets into that discussion. So um, you just got to be careful about that. Right. Agreed. I know there's all kinds of potential hiccups that can come up. Um, I've got another transaction now where it's a cash transaction. And yeah. All right. Cool. Sweet. Well, somebody has to sign off on it in the family mm -hmm. and they're not signing off on it. So it's like, you know, yeah, you just... There's no, there's no uh, identical situations and you just have to be able to handle these problems when they come up, you know, but the DU yeah, yeah. thing just gets on my last nerve. So I'm yeah, happy. It does for me too. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, I'm happy we talked about this today so we could educate people and hopefully other realtors that uh, a DU is like, that's cute, but it really doesn't mean anything. It sounds kind of cool, but it's not really that cool after all. But here's the point. I think we always, we really want to make this point. We talk about this a lot, but this also supports it. We always say that the most prepared buyers win. It's a simple rule that we follow every time. And part of that, part of that process of being prepared is that when we take an application, we're going to get those documents up front. We're going to get the W-2s, pay subs, bank statements, and so on. So I can personally validate the income. So that I know when I give you give you an approval, it's a truly validated approval that we expect we're going to close on. Mm -hmm. And so, and so that's why we have, you know, we, we do really well with our offers because we are prepared. We have a game plan. We're not shooting from the hip. I can tell a listing agent, I have validated the income. Here's how I validated it. Let's go. It's there. Right. I've got it. We'll get it done. And, he, and you and I both know, we talk to these lenders and I'll say, well, send me the W-2s or the pay stubs and they don't have it. They don't have right. it. And you're like, what are you even doing right now? You know? Yeah. So that's why we always talk about the most prepared buyers win. And that's how we do it. I love it. Rick, you're amazing. I thank you for your time and your expertise. You. And hopefully somebody learned something today about uh, pre-approvals and DUs and that sort of thing. It's all fun. All right. Thanks, Good Rick. Stuff. Talk to you soon. Thanks, Megan. Appreciate you. See ya. Bye. Bye.